Welcome to Soapbox Interview from Sat Media. I'm Matt Skitza, and today I'm joined by Matt Dubil. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Matt. No problem. <clears throat> Let's start with you. Uh, can you tell us a little something about yourself and also what you're running for? I'm a dad, Matt. I have four kids. And in fact, I've been watching some videos of myself lately. I say I have four kids a lot because those four kids, for, as parents know, are everything. Right. Uh, been married for about 21 years. We'll be celebrating 21 years this, uh, this July. Okay. Grew up in Downers Grove. And uh, I'm an only child, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have a lot of kids. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a dad. You know, when you're growing up and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with your life, as my kids are now, my, my oldest is 20. And he's like, well, what am I going to do with myself? I didn't know at 20 either, but I always knew I wanted to be a dad. And so uh, my time and my life are spent around these four people that uh, I have the pleasure of helping and mentoring. And mm -hmm. I have... Anthony, who's 20, Natalie, who's about to graduate high school, and uh, Rocco is 15, he's a freshman, and our youngest, Stella, is 10 years old, and they are our life. Mm. And it's because of them and our journey with them and our battles because of them. Uh, some parents might be thinking like, well, battles with the teenagers, not so much. It's been battles with their schools and with the government and with their employers that motivated me to get into this race for United States Senate to stand up for children and stand up for their parents because we're already standing up for my kids. I figure we might as well start doing it for everybody else's kids too. Right, right. So before you decided to run for Senate, uh, what were you doing prior to that? I'm a media guy. Media guy. Not unlike yourself. All right. In fact, I, I, I know you already have a name for the show, but the, the, the title Between Two Flags jumps out at me. Did you ever see Two Ferns, Between Two Ferns? Yeah. I, yeah. So um, I've been in media my entire life. Uh, I was 17 years old. I started as an intern with Steve Dahl on the radio mm -hmm. at WMVP in downtown Chicago. And I worked my way up from doing uh, commercials to being on the air, being a disc jockey, and then eventually working, you know, as, as you work your way up, you end up working with clients and sales and like everything, you know, today. And uh, as I did that more and more, I uh, got into it and realized that if I want to have kids, that's where I'm going to be making a living. And so right. today we have a small business ourselves. We own an AM radio station in Elmhurst and it's AM 1530 WCKG. Okay. And another motivator for me getting into this United States Senate race is our business and the businesses of our clients were completely decimated during this COVID shutdown. Mm. And uh, we felt it and our clients felt it. And I felt like, like we need to get in there and get helping with these people. Yes, excellent, excellent. So you, you have a comfortable life. You have great kids. It seems like everything is going great. So why, why take that plunge into the life of a politician? It sounds like a suicide mission to some, yeah, right. especially today. And, and here's, here's what I experienced. When you stand up and you go to talk to the school board or you go to talk to the administration at your kid's school or you're calling your congressperson to get help for small businesses or to say, hey, why are we shutting down right now? Why isn't the world open? Why is government putting their boot on the neck of the middle class, the parents, the people of the suburbs? Why is this happening and what are you gonna do about it? And nothing gets done and you get attacked for doing it. You start to, to realize pretty quickly, you can handle it. And if you're doing it for yourself, which I am, and if you're fighting for your children, and if you're going to the school board meetings anyway, might as well start doing it for the rest of the people. Another thing that occurred to me, Matt, during this whole process was I'd look around and I'd come home and I'd tell my wife, you know, like, we're the only ones that are standing up in 2020. We're the only ones that are speaking out in 2021. And even in 2022, it's a little bit more quiet than we expected. It occurred to me, 
a lot of people can't say anything because they don't have this comfort level that I do where I work for myself. You can't cancel me. I work for myself. Now you could right. try. They can try with advertisers and advertiser pressure and they have, and I felt it, but we've pushed through it. And once you start to push through that, you start to realize, well, I can take more than I thought I could. And if I'm doing it for myself, I might as well stand up for the rest of these people, these nurses, these cops, these military people, these people with corporate jobs that can't say anything and are quiet because they're afraid of losing their job. They're mm. afraid of you know, standing out because the nail that stands up is the first one that gets smacked back down again. And we need that kind of representation. So that's been my motivation to go, all right, I'm already out there anyway. We're, right. We'll take the shots. I'm gonna take them for my kids. Let me take them with you for your kids and you can continue to do whatever you do. And if you have to be quiet while you're a nurse in the, in the medical system, you can stay quiet because somebody's gonna have your back for once. So you, you mentioned that some of your, your advertisers stepped away from you for a while. Have any of them come back by any chance? No, and, and not, to no fault of their own, I changed my business model tremendously. Okay. Um, I had just altered our business model right before COVID. We became a sports radio station focused on sports gambling because live sports was still active mm. and sports gambling was coming into Illinois. So we put on Fox Sports, we put on Dan Patrick and big talent from around the country and then some local talent. We discovered a local guy, really great guy. Mm. And we put them on the air and then COVID happened. Mm. Boom. Sports changed, media consumption changed. And you know, radio is all about at work listening and commuter listening. Right. Well, when people aren't driving back and forth to work, things change. When sports aren't happening, things change. When gambling is maybe postponed or we don't know what's happening, things change. And so, boom, my, our business bottomed out. So we changed and we adjusted our business model to get ready for that. And unfortunately, small businesses in America, they're not spending a lot of money on advertising in general because they're still recovering from being shut down arbitrarily. You know, the whole point of advertising is to get people in the door. If your doors are closed or the government's telling you you have to tell people that they have to jump through certain hoops to get your products and services, mm. doesn't make a lot of sense to spend money on advertising. You just can't afford it. So those small businesses are hurting and they need help too. So was that your major reason that you jumped into the political field is from the business side where you had the COVID issue and some difficulties there that you felt had to be changed or is there something else that pulled you in? It, w it was actually that the pain of the business problems that I felt and I saw my fellow business people experiencing was what made it as if I had nothing left to lose because it had bottomed out. Mm. The actual inspiration for this was my kids and the battle to let my kids go to school without having a mask on their face, without having to discuss their medical history, without having to be tested for being completely healthy. You don't test healthy kids, you don't uh, quarantine healthy kids. And our schools were trying to quarantine and test healthy kids and put medical apparatus on them without their, our permission. Right. And in addition to that, when in-person learning resumed, my kids were made to do homework assignments that had tones of CRT and SEL, even though the left radicals will say that doesn't exist, it exists and it's happening. And so we immediately started pushing back with the school and we were met with resistance. So we hired an attorney and we sued the governor so my kids could go to school without a mask. We were one of the first families to hire Tom DeVore and to jump into that lawsuit. Okay. That was a defining moment for us because we saw what was possible and we saw the groundswell of support from other parents that were finally starting to sort of wake up versus 2020, they weren't, they weren't so sure, 2021, they, weren't, they were kind of getting a hint of it. 2022, everything changed and our schools showed themselves to us with some of their reactions. They, they, they uh, denied our medical exemptions for the kids, they denied their religious exemptions and we became fed up and it became clear to me 
that not only do we need a new governor, not only do we need patriots in the state legislature, not only do we need patriots in local government, we need senators from Illinois to represent common sense, normal people in Washington and back here at home, the way that I've been representing my kids here at home. So let's take a look at the, the position itself. Uh, obviously there's uh, a small army of people running for U.S. <laughs> Senate right now. And uh, probably one of the biggest reasons is the current incumbent, uh, yeah. Tammy Duckworth. Um, do you feel that that's the, one of the major reasons why there's so many now running or why is there so many people running for this seat? It's interesting. There's a lot of talk about a red wave and people believe that if this is, if there's ever going to be a year in Illinois, this is the year and this is the right wave and get your surfboard and let's go. Um, there are a, a quite a few people running for this office. There's really one person only out of that field that can beat Tammy Duckworth, and that's Matt Dubiel. Mm. I believe that in my heart. I believe it in my soul. Um, that's why I got into this. And frankly, because of that, um, I think that the field has gotten a little bit crowded, and the Uniparty and the GOP have tried to get involved a little bit and kind of support certain people. And, and we're finding out in a lot of ways, the game seems to be rigged. Mm. But the good news is, is the voters get to decide in the end. And so ultimately, the problem in Illinois, the problem with that role of senator is we have two dud senators mm. representing a radical woke agenda. You can see it in their Twitter feed. And I know a lot of people aren't on Twitter, or not as many as, as the media would have us believe, but I encourage everybody in Illinois to just look up Dick Durbin and Tammy Duckworth's Dick and Duck's Twitter feed. Right. Dick and Duck are propagating an agenda to us. They're supposed to take our agenda to Washington, D.C. Mm. It's not happening. Those seven or six other candidates, God bless them all, they at least are aware of that. And I believe that in their hearts, they probably want to affect some change. And I salute anybody that wants to go through this to help all of us, which is what they all, I think, in their hearts want to do. In the end, though, the person that wins this primary has to be able to beat Duckworth. Hmm. And I believe if we can't do that, if we, if we put forth the wrong person, Duckworth wins and we never get Dick out. If we get Duckworth out, we have the momentum and the belief in Illinois, this nonsense of us being a blue state is kind of erased. Right. And we have hope and the idea that something is possible and we can run with that and now focus on getting somebody in in four years to replace Dick so that we have some really common sense, logical representation for Illinois, which is basically the bedrock of the United States of America. So you mentioned, and of course, anybody who's going to watch this interview, you said that I'm the candidate that can unseat yeah. Tammy Duckworth and without giving up any trade secrets <laughs> of, of any nature. How? It's, here's, here's the, the, this cannot be duplicated by anyone else. Just mm. for starters, just by being me. Nobody else, and, and I encourage everybody just to be themselves in everything they're doing. Nobody can duplicate you. Nobody can be a better you. You can try and be somebody else and you're going to fail. You can try and sing like Frank Sinatra. You're never going to be Frank Sinatra. I am not here to get people to like me. I'm just here to show people who Matt Dubiel is. And what I'm finding is they get it when they find out. And it's not an ego thing. It's not Matt Dubiel is the greatest. Matt Dubiel is just a real guy. He's a real dad. And he believes in a lot of the things that regular people believe in. And I think what happens in these scenarios is people get into these candidacies, these runs, these roles, and they think they have to do certain things because that's what other people do. And I'm even doing it. I'm wearing a flag pin. You have to wear a flag pin when you're running for office. <laughs> it's like some unwritten rule. Right. Some of those things I think are okay. 
In fact, I kind of looked at it and I go like, why wasn't I always wearing a flag pin? I like this. Mm. And then some of it is complete nonsense and we need to flush it out and get rid of it. And so I am going to speak truth. I'm going to be honest. I'm not perfect. I'm not here to win people over. I'm just here to show people who I am and what I stand for. And I stand for these things that other parents, other citizens, other Democrats and Republicans and independents believe in. Basic things like kids should learn math, science, and reading in school. They shouldn't be uh, infiltrated with radical ideas about their sexuality or their teacher's sexuality. Most of us grew up in a time where we didn't even know anything about our teachers. We didn't know they were married until we saw them by accident in public out to dinner on a Saturday night with their spouse. And then you bumped into them and went, oh, Mrs. So-and-so is actually a real life person. Mm. Today, our teachers are foisting their ideas and their, their lifestyle on our children. And both sides don't want that. Common sense people don't want that. So I think in the end, those are the sorts of things that are going to have people who I get to talk with and share my ideas with going, Matt, yeah, I totally get it. Me and Matt are like this. Mm. Matt won't let me down, and I won't. Mm. So now let's take a look at the state. You know, Obviously, the next question will probably be the United States. But for now, Illinois, where's our difficulties? Where has Illinois failed? <laughs> I, know, I know that's a Ooh. tall order, tall question, but... Here's, here's an example of, of what I mean when I say that I'm not going to you know, sugarcoat it and speak truth. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, and I think people know this deep down inside, and some candidates are saying these things, it's we the people that have let our guard down. It's we the people who elected somebody to the school board and thought, okay, that's, we got that, that's covered. So-and-so is on the school board. We elect a governor because he says he's a Republican, Bruce Rauner. And then you go, oh man, this was the wrong guy. We pick the wrong people and then we sometimes pick the right people and we don't hold them accountable in Illinois. That's our fault, my fault included. We get caught up in presidential elections and Trump and Biden and we get caught up in gubernatorial elections. Ooh, Pritzker, yes, Pritzker's gotta go. Pritzker's terrible. Biden's got to go. Biden's terrible. There's no question. But guess what? There's more important roles that affect all of our lives that we, the people, don't pay nearly enough attention to. School board seats, mm -hmm. state senate seats, um, precinct captains, committeemen. These roles that, myself included, I wasn't paying attention to these things. One of those is our representation as uh, a state to Washington, and we get two chances at that, mm. dick and duck. Mm. And these people are misrepresenting us, and we're all just kind of going about our business. You know, we're still watching the Bears, or watching the Cubs, or watching the Sox, or whatever we're doing, while they tweet out, Tammy tweeted out in the last couple months, if she's reelected, she, Tammy Duckworth, is gonna codify abortion into law. I mean, we got a lot of problems in yeah. this country. There's a lot of things going wrong. They're signing bills, her and Dick are signing bills that they don't read. They're passing legislation to spend billions of dollars while they wear the flags of other countries on our property. And she's gonna focus her next term on codifying abortion into law. It's nonsensical. So that's our fault, that's on us. And if we allow that sickness to permeate through the next six years and or the next year in any office, it's gonna to continue to be on us. We get right. to vote, but we have to babysit that vote and we need to hold those people accountable and we need to vote these bums out when they misrepresent us. It's on us. So you're gonna be representing the state of Illinois in Washington. Yeah. In the federal government. And quite honestly, how Congress looks at its citizens is, it's a disaster. We're not really citizens, we're subjects at a point. Yeah. So where do we go with that? As you step into Congress, what needs to change there? Isn't it a sad commentary 
when the country that was built on this experiment in self-government is flipped and we're, we've reverted to what we, what we fled. We don't have kings. We don't have uh, knights and dames. We don't have peerage in this country. We, the people, run the government. And so there should be nothing special about people in Congress or people in Senate, myself included. I think the first step to getting there is to getting more people that are regular people to go to office, to go to Washington, more people that get the heck out of Washington and come back home during their term. So Dick and Duck are spending an awful lot of time in the swamp. Tammy has a house in Virginia. I don't know how much time she spends in her home here in Illinois, mm. but they are supposed to go there, represent us, then come back home and see what's going on and, and mingle with the people and do the regular things. Go to school board meetings. I've never seen Dick and Duck at a school board meeting. I've never seen them standing in line for veterans benefits. I've never seen them uh, battling with the, you know, Small Business Association and PPP and all the other things that were going on during the shutdown. Right. And I want to know why they're not representing us, because that's what we need. We need regular people to go, come back during their term, and then when the term is over, we need to find another regular person to go. That's how this thing was set up. I mean, patriots know this, and, and most people, if they're being taught proper history, know this. Thomas Jefferson is clapping for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're supposed to you know, leave the farm, your yes. kids run the farm, you come back to the farm, and somebody else gets in there. That's how it's supposed to be. A lot of people are talking about term limits and all this stuff. We have to impose them. Yes, I would vote for term limits. But we also have to impose them. I'm imposing them on myself. I'm going for one term. Mm. My inspiration is to be an inspiration, show we can get Duckworth out, and now we're going to get Dick out. And so we're going to get, you know, we're going to blaze a trail, sort of take the machete and cut the path. And now we have a path to get there. And everyone knows it's possible. If we start doing that and we get normal people in there, I think we got a great chance at making America and Illinois the best it's ever been. So we've covered you, the campaign, the state of Illinois, the federal government. Uh, what do you want people to take away from this interview, from you, uh, that we haven't touched on today? Is there something, a special interest, um, something that you really wanted to focus on to make sure that people understand who you are? I... When, when they, they tell you when you're running for office to, to not talk beyond what the people are talking about. Right. Um, unfortunately, there's so much going on that we, we can't continue to talk about the same things and expect different results. And while we're talking about those things in the rearview mirror, a lot of them, not that they should be ignored, but we're missing where, where we're going on the road ahead. And the road ahead is so dangerous. And I don't know if people really understand. I'm going to give you a quick example. Mm. COVID. There's a lot of discussion about, well, we need a governor. Yes, we do. We need to get this guy out. Yes, we need uh, to get Duckworth out. I'm, I'm here to help with that. Yes, we need to get some state reps and we need to flush people out that are not representing the people. However, our biggest problems in America are coming from Starbucks, Costco, Apple, big companies, our banks, and they're, they've already been initiated during COVID where these companies put us on lockdown, mm. even when the government was maybe not so sure about it. The government's supposed to stand in between them and us and protect us. But the government is aligning with big business. The government is aligning with big tech. And they're aligning against the people. People, everyday people, need to really start taking a look at consumer um, ESG scores, social credit scores, and how all of that, if we don't get control now and get representation now, is going to change our lives and the lives of our children forever. Meaning, you think you can't post something on Facebook now? Wait till later and Facebook is tied to your car and it's tied to your electric bill and it's tied to your social credit score mm. and government is going, Nah, it's, those companies are doing it. It's a private company. You choose to deal with the private company. We need government. 
we need our representatives to stand in the way and protect the people. Ultimately, my same motivation for getting into this race is that protection of our future for my kids and, and your kids and everyone's grandchildren and beyond. Right. Because that sort of draconian control, which we already got a taste of, I mean, there were memes and I joked a little bit, if you like your communism, you can keep your communism. That was initiated during COVID. And it wasn't just at the hand of government. It was at the hand of big business and big tech. And I don't hear a lot of candidates talking about that. And that ties directly into our medical freedom. Can you go to a restaurant without showing something on your phone? Mm -hmm. Can you go to work without talking about what you did to your body or didn't do? It's none of anybody's business. But our medical freedom and our personal freedom and our banking and our travel are all interchangeable and interlinked here with technology. And we need people that are not noobs when it comes to tech mm. that get in there and know we got to protect ourselves from a federal level on down because you can have the best governor in the world. But when Costco says you got to wear masks to get in and buy your 12 pound thing of mayonnaise, <laughs> you are in deep trouble. You're not gonna be able to get the mayonnaise or the right. chicken or whatever new thing is in a shortage, the toilet paper. So they're going to force their will on us. So everybody needs to really look into that and find candidates across the board that are ready to stand up for we the people, for our medical freedom and for our constitutional freedom, independent of big business and big tech. Matt, thank you for joining us at Sat Media today and wish you the best of luck with your campaign. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Matt. I grew up in Illinois. One of my best memories is listening to the radio on the way to go fishing in Braidwood with my dad. Today, I'm a dad and I work in radio. I met my wife, Michelle, here in Woodridge at a restaurant we both worked at, and now we have four kids of our own. And we take them that same ride down I-55 to go fishing. There's one big thing that changes when we grow up and have kids, priorities. The country we grew up in was patriotic. The playbook for the American dream was clear. Go to school, get good grades, go to college, follow the golden rule, get a job, buy a house, get married and raise a family. But it hasn't quite worked out that way. Today, criminals are the ones who are rewarded instead of achievers. Our college graduates are working as baristas while our trades can't find enough qualified workers. Our children, are taught critical race theory and early alt sex ed while being told two plus two equals five. Our government is printing and spending money resulting in massive inflation. And the internet, which was supposed to liberate people with information, is instead being used to track and silence Americans. The truth is, America has the wrong priorities. It's up to us to get America back on track again because we're up against a media that lies to us, schools that teach our kids to hate themselves and our country, and corporations that have gotten so wealthy and powerful, they think they're in charge. It's time to put America first, protect our children, support parents, restore law, order, and common sense, and secure our border once and for all. Instead of pretending we can somehow fix the rest of the world, we've got to get back to our constitution and what it stands for, we the people. My name is Matt Dubiel. I'm running to represent Illinois in the United States Senate. Because if we want our kids and grandkids to know the joy of freedom in the USA, we need the right priorities. I hope you'll join me. Okay, Patriot, it's Matt Dubiel, and there are three things we need every American Patriot to do right now to help secure America, fix our border, fix our economy, and restore common sense in our schools and across the country, starting with here in Illinois. Thing number one to do, please take a moment to take out your phone 
text, call, or email, probably texting is the easiest, text everybody you know, text 100 to 200 people you know and ask them to find out more about Matt Dubiel. Send them one of my YouTube videos, send them one of my Facebook videos, send them something that got through to you that made you say, yep, this guy is the real deal. So that's thing number one, reach out and use your phone to reach everyone you, everyone you know. Thing number two, go to dubielforsenate.com, dubiel, D-U-B-I-E-L, for senate.com, and please follow, share, and consider donating to our campaign for yard signs, uh, media, material, staff, whatever you can do. Thing number three, get in and vote. Vote on June 28th and vote for the America First Patriot candidates in every race, starting with United States Senate and Matt Dubiel on down the ticket because we need to fix Illinois, we need to fix America, and we can do it together. You have the power. We, the people, have the power. I'm Matt Dubiel, and I approve this message, and I can't wait to represent you in D.C. and here at home in Illinois. Thank you for your support.